Um, what is the, why do we have the system we have in terms of the way we pay for healthcare? We have this third party pay. What was the sort of historical background? And the particular one is why did, why did companies get health insurance for their employees? Well, you, you, your question's a little bit complicated here because there are multiple factors that enter into it. The whole history of a socialization in the broadest sense of medical care goes back 100 years. Uh, Bismarck and his group started it back in Germany. It extended into the United States and they toyed with it in the uh, first half of the 20th century. Uh, and, and even the organized medicine in the forms of the American Medical Association was involved in discussing and talking about doing various things uh, that would involve that. About the same time as the American Medical Association began talking about um, having some form of national or state-sponsored, government-sponsored medical care, the uh, uh, people who were involved in business uh, realized that they could, uh, in the entrepreneurial spirit, incidentally, which is, exists, of course, throughout the country, said, well, you know, we can set up a plan where uh, individuals can contribute a small amount of money, and then we can have a contractual relationship with a provider of sorts, whether it be a physician or a hospital, and we can exchange these monies back and forth, and it kind of takes the worry away from the, the patient. Because if they can contribute this to this plan on a periodic basis, uh, then they and they know that their future expenses will be covered. This is a delightful way to do this. So the beginnings began with the Blue Cross Blue Shield plans in the 30s, and slowly grew uh, throughout World War II when the big change about the deductibility of expenses for this form of insurance became a factor primarily around World War II, this changed again the whole atmosphere because now the employer was contributing the money. And so the responsibility for payment began to shift from the patient who was responsible for payment and had felt a, a need and a concern for what was being spent. That began to erode and that progressed uh, uh, as more insurance companies then saw, gee whiz, this is a way that's a good business and we can make money. There's a profit here. It's a wide open field. So that began expanding. As that expanded, government took a big interest because it was perceived by some people that there were a large segment of our population, the elderly, who could not get the medical care that they needed. And there were a large group of people who were relatively destitute. And they couldn't get what they needed. So what we needed to do was was let government step in and provide this form of charity, that's in quotes, charity, uh, to, to the individuals who need the care. Then when they began this, it's just been a steady erosion and a steady change since then. You look at the graphs that show the degree of participation, the out-of-pocket spending on the part of the patients uh, 60, 50, 60 years ago, uh, in the neighborhood of 30, 40 percent or something like that to today's uh, expenditure is down to less than 10 percent. I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal change that's happened and it's been a steady change. It hasn't been a catastrophic one. It's been a steady change. With this has come then the same concept of somebody else is going to be paying the bill. I don't have to worry about it. It's not coming out of my pocket. So therefore, I'm entitled to it. And it's a change in the mentality. Uh, of, of the way medical care is given uh, because if somebody else is paying the bill, what, what do I worry about? If I get sick, I go see a doctor. And the doctor says, gee whiz, somebody else is paying the bill, uh, so we'll just do whatever, whatever we think you might like to do. Uh, rather than balancing out your desire to have something done uh, to, against your actual need for having something done.